Hi everyone, welcome back to a brand new episode on the SharePoint Wizard podcast. Today with me again, and uh, today we have invited our honorable guest Michel Mendes. He is an MVP in business applications and Microsoft 365. And uh, yeah, welcome to the show. And uh, if you would like, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Thanks, guys. Like it's a pleasure to to be here, and um, it's good to be among our community friends and be chatting a little bit. And um, just about myself, guys. Like as you said, I am a, I am a an MVP in these apps and Microsoft 365. In my career, I started a long time ago in IT as a C-sharp developer. Then I became a SharePoint developer and SharePoint consultant. And after a while, I started to work with the Power Platform and you know just building Canvas apps on top of SharePoint. And slowly, I migrated into only Power, pure Power Platform projects. And currently, like my basically my contact with SharePoint and Microsoft 365 is basically more targeted to my own productivity than to development itself. So, you know, yeah. I, I became more a power user of SharePoint now than a SharePoint developer, but that's it. Michelle, okay. are you from Ireland? No, I live originally. in Ireland, but I, I am from Brazil. Oh, interesting. So, so you, you speak also uh, Spanish? Portuguese. No, Portuguese. Portuguese, yeah. <laughs> ah. Ah, no so, worries, I mean, uh, like it. <laughs> it can be it can be confusing. Yeah. When when did yeah. you uh when did you leave your home country? I moved to Ireland in 2018. So 18. the story was like, yeah, I applied for a job remotely, took the interviews, and then I got everything approved, got the, the whole paper ship, the visa and everything, and then I moved two months oh. after that. It was like a very fast move. Yeah. Since then and I'm living in Ireland. Happy with that decision? Yeah, definitely, yeah, man. Obviously, we miss a few things about Brazil, but the good thing about being in Europe for us is like the ability to travel. You know, we can travel to a lot of different countries here around. Yeah, and I yeah. think I'm very happy with my job as well, so it's, which is my main important factor now, you know. So yeah. it, was a, it was a good move because actually I, I always had the, I always had like the, the wish of doing like an interchange course, you know, man, when people study another language in another country and as I moved like only to work, I'm kind of, you know, working and doing an interchange course for free because then I'm working on a, another language and improving my other language, you know. It was good because yeah. I studied English when I was a teenager, so I needed to, you know, ramp up a little bit in the beginning, but I think now it's okay. You know, I feel more comfortable. Yeah, and I think uh, because I, I went through the same, I went through the same uh, journey almost. I came, I come from Albania and I, I moved to Germany 2010. Now, when I was 19 years old, and I yeah. didn't know the language either, so the difference is that you you moved to a country where you could, at least it was English. Right? So I moved yeah. to a country where it was German, and um, yeah, it was a very it was a great, good decision, but it was a difficult decision to, to make and a difficult journey. But uh, yeah, I, I feel what you mean. I was last year in Dublin, and I really liked the the city for the Power Platform Conference. Yeah, nice. Oh, I think cool. I, I think. I think the IT market here is very good, you know, and the, 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 the good thing about Dublin is like the city I lived in Brazil, I think it was, you know, too busy, too much traffic. Mm -hmm. And here in Dublin, like I can go walking to most of the places if I want, or like it's a 10 minute bus. To, yeah, to Brazil is a I huge want, country. Know? I mean, you cannot yeah. compare, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like that's the type of thing I was kind of looking into, you know, because I, I am from a small city in Brazil, actually. And I lived in okay. Belo Horizonte, which is a big city, like for 10 years or so. So I was like, yeah, maybe, you know, I, I visited Dublin for one month, like two years before I moved. So I knew the city I was coming to. So like I came here only on holidays and I was like, yeah, it would be good to find a job in Dublin. And I actually got a job in Dublin two years after that, you know, Perfect. which was really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I would love to visit uh, Brazil someday, but uh, it's a bit far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I just go to Portugal and to have a little bit of the same feeling based on their language at least. <laughs> well, yeah, I can I can say that you can actually experience kind of the same feeling as well because like I went to Portugal two months ago and it was good to refresh, you know, like to be yeah. speaking our my language all the time and to go to places where I could, you know, you know, it's it's not the same type of food, but it. It's do you, do you have Passeginata in Portugal, in uh, Brazil? No, we don't have Passeginata in, in, in Brazil. Not, you know, not originally, but if you go to it's, maybe Portuguese restaurants or something yeah, like that, you can find, you know. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. We have uh, prepared a couple of questions. Yep. Um, so I I would like to know what is the one tool that you cannot live without during your 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 work day your work hours. Now, what's what's the one tool that you have to use or that you need to use and so on? Microsoft Teams. I can't live without Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams. Because it's like my communication and all my meetings, everything is based yeah. on Teams every day, you know, file sharing and everything. I know like there's a lot of other Microsoft tools on the background, you know, as the Power Automate flows, SharePoint, everything, but the basis of everything is Teams, you know. Yeah. So, so like, are you a fan? So are you a fan of uh, of having everything in Teams, like apps and flows and approvals and everything, or do you think it's a bit too much in Teams? No, I, it depends on the process you you we want to implement in the company. You know, sometimes it's it's easier. Like if you want to automate some notifications, I think that it works better if we put notifications in Teams because people tend to check Teams more often than email. So sometimes I think it's useful. You know, just to create even basic workflows if you want to notify people or you know just like group warnings or messages it doesn't need to be very complex approval process, processes but you know if you can automate stuff to avoid doing manual notifications it's like a big win for me at least you know uh -huh. if you want to do team yeah. notifications and things like that it's it's great yeah. the, the issue the, with the teams is Sorry, oh, okay I'm yeah coming on no, I'm I'm saying yeah, definitely I agree in there that the the new Teams has uh, it's faster and uh, it has lots Not of bad, uh, yeah. benefits. Um, but yet sometimes I I feel Teams is for dedicated projects. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. if you compare to to a SharePoint site where you have a document library and it could be for multiple for for a department, a team can be something that you open just for a small project. Yep. a small team and uh, if if you belong to multiple uh, uh, teams and channels then it can be overwhelming and you, yeah. you so many no notification and things it, it can be be crazy and sometimes yeah. you it depends if it's for collaboration it's great but sometimes for the document management uh, management or content management a SharePoint yeah. site is can be uh, yeah. enough I have so, so many. I have so many teams in teams uh, which are uh, here silent <laughs> because yeah, I, that's what I, do. I mean, come on, guys. Yeah, but it's it's how it is, right? The collaboration it's getting all out of hand a little bit. Yeah, and I think the, the 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 idea of putting notifications in silent is not that you you won't check the notifications, but you kind of organize yourself in a way that you know what to prioritize. Like, do those teams need to be answered quickly or not? Yeah. So, I think it it works fine for me, you know. As soon as we establish what's the priority or not, it's okay. Just to think that Microsoft increased the the, the maximum uh, number of channels to one thousand. That's crazy. So <laughs> how many how many notifications with one thousand channels in one team can be? I hope nobody creates one thousand teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the what was the previous limitation about? I think it was two hundred. Two hundred, yeah. Because I remember one project I worked in the past. The guys created something like, okay, um, it was kind of a mini case management system that guys created with the SharePoint list. So when a new entry was added, a new channel was created to discuss that on Teams via Power Automate. So it was like thousands of, not thousands, but you know, dozens of channels created. You know. It to, to practice my power automate, I, I did an experiment and I I did something that uh, went and each time created uh, uh, directly a, a new channel. So mm -hmm. uh, automatically it was in one team it added each time a, a, a channel until it reached the maximum. So it was yeah. interesting also to to practice my power automate uh, skills and also to see how the the, the team. Uh, is uh, done. So actually, we'll, we'll go to the next question. Um, we see countless use cases where Power Automate is used with SharePoint Online. What do you think is the journey of the two tools so far? And what do you miss or most? And what do you think of, of them going together? 
to be honest, I don't think I don't I don't miss anything right now. I think you know, comparing to the world to the to the old workflows that we had in SharePoint Designer, there are a few things, a few gaps. Like uh, you could run application steps with the workflow that you cannot do with Power Automate, but then in Power Automate you can like create a connection with a, an account that has more privileges, and then you can do more or less the same thing, right? And I think um, on the on the beginning, since Power Automate began, there was I think if I'm not wrong, you couldn't run loops or something like that. It was a few limitations, but like the number of actions start growing. They added the HTTP action as well, which enables you to do a lot more stuff that you cannot do with the standard actions. Mm -hmm. and the, the, I think the recent additions that I see as most valuable to me is the the new approvals app on Teams because now you can track all the approvals inside of Teams instead of having to build your own approval system. Um, I mm -hmm. like as well integrations with list formatting so you can trigger flows from buttons in list formatting and things like that. So it's oh. a nice integration to oh. add with Power Automate. Um, what else do I think? Yeah, I think, I think it's great also because previously, if you think about only SharePoint workflows in the past, it was restricted to SharePoint only. So now you can leverage yeah. connections to lots of other applications. You know, you know, it's not only SharePoint and email it, as it was before. You can send notifications on Teams. You can create a record in any any other system. Like you can send data to Dataverse or whatever. It expands a lot of what mm -hmm. you can do. You know, it's not restricted to only SharePoint. Like you can call yeah. um, Microsoft Graph Actions and things like that. So I just mm -hmm. see them growing. You know, and the the the, the nice thing, one thing I, it's not. I don't see it being announced, but I feel that, do you see when you create a new list, you have the flows when you enable, uh, you enable the out of the box flows when you create a new list, Yeah. then yeah. it gets provisioned automatically. Yes. I think it would, yes. it, it would be really cool if we can add our own flows to our list templates. So you create a SharePoint I, I think library. I think it's, it's, it's in the future, it will be possible. Because yeah. uh, you'll be able to make your own uh, templates and include, I think, also the the automation inside. But uh, that's what what I think is going to be. Yeah, I think I think I don't know if it's on Microsoft's plans, but I hope it it's it's something to be launched. Yep. Because I think it's going to be very yep. useful. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, let's move to another topic, but let's stay in the in the inside of the Power Platform. Yep. I know that you have uh, been working also with with Power Pages, right? Yep. So, so Power Pages is not not uh, it's it's pretty familiar on your on your daily day work. So, um, and I th I know that Power Pages is also a pretty recent tool because it was a part of the, I mean, in 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 the actual form, it's a pretty recent tool. It used to be part of the Power Apps portals, and then they extracted mm -hmm. it, they created it. Another icon which we had then to renew all our uh, slides and and <laughs> backgrounds that we had with a new tool in the Power Platform. Um, can you maybe share your thoughts? What do you think on Power Pages? Maybe maybe a couple of use cases that you've been experiencing and uh, where is the uh, how do you how do you call it the, the USB of, of of Power Pages? Yeah, um, I think you know it's a I'd, I'd say I'd say this is a very kind of a niche type of project to use Power Pages. Like if if you want to create public websites quickly, like as a maker, you can do it like from the Power Pages Studio just with the drag and drop and configuring features or using Copilot. That's one type of thing, which is, you know, mm -hmm. a very specific use case. And especially like I, I, I'd say, if you want to use Power Pages, keep in mind data has to be lying on, on Dataverse or if it's on SharePoint or, or any other data source, data source, it has to be supported via virtual tables, right? Mm. So mainly the, the, the use case would be you expose a public site where people can receive data or interact with data in your Dataverse environment somehow. Mm. So the main use cases I see, like it's, it can be like in the project I work for, it's like a, a public body where people want to receive information or send information to them. So like external users, they log into the system, send data, upload documents or whatever, and then people uh, on the back office, they open the same data via model-driven app and handle the data and approve the workflows or things like that. So it's mainly a way to external people to receive data and submit data. Yeah, so like a know. gateway to, to external. So. Okay. Yeah, so it's like you can enable it. 
to internal users as well. But I see the huge ben I see the huge benefit if you want to use it with external users because you know most of the things you could do in Power Pages for internal users, you could do with model driven apps or Canvas apps as well. It's that's just a different way of doing things. Yeah, but for ex that that will be my question because where is the why why not use a Canvas app? Why use a Power Power Page? Because if you if you have to add a guest account or you don't need a guest account for Power Pages. No, it's not a guest account. It's a different type of license. So it's a, a fully external user. So someone with a Gmail account registers as if they were in a public site. So if you want to oh, register, okay. like, you know, like you want to register, let's say, for example, you, you could think about something like you have Ticketmaster where you buy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the, what technology they use, guys. I'm just giving an example. Like yeah, could exactly. be done using Power Pages. Like they, you, you want to implement a, a tool where someone registers with any email address without having to get license assigned or like uh, to run to the process of being added to Azure AD, they register into the website, they can buy tickets or they can buy some stuff and or send information to, to to your company internally. But they are not registered in Azure AD. Okay, There's a okay. tool called Azure AD so B2C that, that you can use to register external users, but it's a, a different story, you know? So it's an anonymous? So uh, anyone uh, can access it without no no login or anything. The power it pages. Can, it can be enabled if you want, and then you enable what tables can be used anonymously, or you have a login. But imagine that it's not a login on, on your ID. It's an external provider that you choose. It can okay, be even Google Google to authenticate on it. You know, Google Microsoft now, account or, or random like you enable. Um, local authentication and then users can register their own email and password that's it you know so now the, the developing it, the developer side of power pages does that require a special license no it doesn't require a special license you only obviously have to have the dataverse licenses because if you want to access data in dataverse environment mm -hmm. you have to have the the proper licenses to that but it's not uh, you don't have you don't need to have the external as far as I know like I've, I've I for the places I, I work it's just uh, no. the same model driven app licenses for example you know. okay okay oh. so and and, yeah. and interesting to know that if you don't use uh, dataverse first of all that you you can use something else and yeah. second that you can you need to create like a virtual table and so like a, it's yeah. like a copy a virtual copy of the, of yeah. the, of the data source. Is it yeah, like something also a, a disadvantage on the performance, or does it have anything? I've heard that. I, I, to be honest, oh, I haven't yeah. tried it with SharePoint and SQL Server. I know you can do it with SharePoint and SQL Server, but I haven't tried it yet. Okay. So, but interesting yeah. to know how, how that yeah. works. Yeah, okay. I, I had I, I have the impression that Power Pages is not used much, but maybe I'm wrong. But it it sounds like a great tool. Um, yeah. I, I think um, maybe the use cases are not that much explored uh, publicly, but I see there's a lot of like, there is a lot of usage of Power Pages in, in right. places you, you don't imagine. Because the thing is, this most of the projects that you see sometimes on big companies, they are heavily customized, so they don't look like a Power Pages site. You can actually build okay. anything like um, with, you know, custom link like imagine you are not using drag and drop to build tools it's just pro code tools so you can use the uh, liquid language to pro uh, perform server-side read operations and you can use power pages web api to do any javascript query so you can you can customize anything you want you know almost like as if it were a full react application for example that you create mm -hmm. in azure something like that wow you know okay no that sounds interesting so that, that opens up the the uh, range of opportunities yeah. And so so it, it removes the limitations that uh, Power Apps and Canvas Apps and so on has. No? Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll go forward with the next question. As, as you mentioned, um, uh, Copilot, um, have you had a chance to, to test uh, Copilot uh, maybe on your daily work or with customers? And you can share some thoughts how, how it can be used uh, for... As a use case, uh, I haven't used Copilot in Power Platform too much, to be honest, because I I think I'm faster doing things myself. But for Microsoft 365, yes, and I use it quite a lot. Okay. It's, I think it's very useful to 
for example, if I go to a meeting or something like that, and then I take a bunch of really short notes, so I can put it in Copilot and say, hey, describe, generate a, a draft document from those notes, and it generates the document. Obviously, it's not 100% wow. perfect, but you can get, you know, at least a, a draft to start with. And, you know, maybe if you want to share meeting notes later with your own words, it's it's really good. Because obviously, you can enable, how can I say the, there's, I forgot the name of the feature, guys, but it's like the auto capture of uh, what people are talking in the meeting and then in Teams. And uh, then meeting meetings. Generates. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah. I saw that. I, I tried that as well. But sometimes I like to do it like, um, Sometimes you cannot enable, uh, you cannot record the meetings, or you mm -hmm. want to do the, the notes mm -hmm. on your own way with your own words, you know? So yeah. that, and if you just take a bunch of bullet points, put it in Copilot and generate some notes. I think it's very useful. And sometimes as well to short, um, shorten content. So for example, you can ask Copilot to summarize a thread of emails, and then it gives you a quick overview of what's in the thread of emails, right? Mm -hmm. That's, That's one cool. thing I think is very yeah. cool. There was another thing I was okay. There's a, I think Copilot is, is is also cool as well. Even if you want to rewrite content in a different way, so you you write the content like a phrase that you want to put in in a text, then you can ask it to be less friendly, more friendly, more formal, less formal. Then it rewrites. Yeah, the in the Outlook, you, you know? especially yeah. in the Outlook or, yeah. or in Word. Yeah, so you yeah. can add. You can reply to your boss uh, in a nice way or, or in a rude way. So yeah. <laughs> depends Before on your. Before you resign. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. No, I also I also try try to use it whenever I can. Uh, I I see I catch myself tending to go to ChatGPT more often. Um, I don't know why. I think it's it's it has better results when when when. You, when I don't want or when I don't need it to see the data, for example, as you said, from emails and so on and so forth. No? When it's, uh, I don't know, when I'm struggling with a, with a formula or a DAX or something like that in Power BI. And then I tend to go more to ChatGPT than to, than to Copilot. But maybe that's, a, that's an uh, early, early relationship that we had with ChatGPT before Copilot uh, took off. Well, <laughs> I, I think Microsoft bought uh, ChatGPT, so eventually uh, it, will, it will be not, one. Not, yeah. not completely. They invested just a lot of money, but uh, yeah, I, mean, I yeah. think ChatGPT Ch will still uh, keep a little bit of advantage for itself. Yeah. That's, that's, otherwise, yeah, they, they are out of the market. So if, if they do completely the same in, in Copilot. But, but that's, thing, that's okay. One, yeah, one thing that I think that's cool about Copilot is, is is it's not only it's because it takes consideration your company context. So sometimes exactly, you, yeah. if you ask questions, it can it can find answers inside of documents. That's that's the best part. You know? if, if you if you don't want to see if you wanted to to answer you based on your data, then of course you need Copilot. But if the data is doesn't matter, then I think sometimes it's ChatGPT a little bit better on the solutions, at least for coding. Yeah, maybe there's a lot of people training the models. With yeah, them. and I, I saw I saw a very interesting I saw a very interesting video on on the, this training topic. Uh, I might share it with you later if I find it. Um, where it was that AI is uh, so um, how do you call it? Uh, it's it's so all over the place now that the new models that are being trained are yes. might be getting trained with the data that they have produced. Oh. My God! No, and so that now becomes like a like an it's it was called like an incest, no, like like something uh -huh. uh, no, that should not happen because the results are getting worse and worse. So now is the the the, the many um, famous scientists were telling that that will be the doom of AI. So it was like a peak, and now it's going down no, the quality of the data because the new the new models are trained with the same data that they have produced. And uh, now is the question: How do you label that data that this AI used? No? And we people, you, if you see something generated by designer or like Dali and so on, you even if you don't see it marked as generated by AI, you have already trained yourself to 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 distinguish it from from an original yeah. made uh, yeah. graphic, right? Because it's it has the same. It has always the same um, tone in colors and so on and so forth. So you. You, you can see that, but AI cannot. So. Yeah, for, for some post on, on LinkedIn, I can see that it was done by a, a chat GPT and not somebody that wrote it. It's it's yeah. too 
too formal or too it's obvious yeah yeah. yeah, that's what I was was about to say. Like, I think it's it's it, they follow the same standards. Like, they are too enthusiastic. <laughs> you know, okay. the, the LinkedIn post, for example, it's a bit exaggerated. Yeah. You can it, it doesn't feel natural. Like, no, and even the images, like, and if, if the the images, if you want to check the images generated by Dolly or the, all those uh, base tools, it looks good, but there's always something with a problem. Like, if you one one issue that I had, I was playing around with it to generate um, like a, a figure like of a, a, a geek guy with a computer. So sometimes it draw the person using two mouses, right? <laughs> or twenty five. Yeah, yeah, you cannot recognize. So I think it's a limitation about the algorithms. Like regardless, I, I, of the tried, you, you know? I tried once to 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 say, uh, give me a person with that has a t-shirt that says SharePoint. It doesn't know how to spell SharePoint. Uh -huh. It makes a, a type mistake uh, e even to write the... Uh, uh. Okay, we need to go forward. So, uh, in yep. there, you yeah, can um, ask the next question. Exactly, yeah. So, so as we can see, and as we know, Michelle, you are um, also a Microsoft MVP, as we mentioned also at the beginning. Maybe you can share a little bit of uh, your journey, how you became an MVP, what, what's your content down there. So, we are also going to link everything uh, on yep. the video description, of course, but maybe you can share a little bit of, of your work and the community. And so, maybe to inspire the, the other ones who are watching yep. uh, and want to achieve that. No problem. Well, I think um, I started to become more active with community primarily via LinkedIn, right? But I had my blog. It was not, not that active in the past. But mm -hmm. I had a friend, uh, David Ramalho. He kind of motivated me to write a little bit more in the blog. So I started to write more stuff in my blog. So I think primarily our LinkedIn blog. And I try to focus, like, if, I, if, if the content I want to post, it's just, you know, maybe a link to something or a, a short tip. I just post it on LinkedIn. But in terms of the blog, I just try to write stuff in my blog that I think, you know, that maybe it's out there, but uh, the solution that people found is not exactly as mm -hmm. one that I created or that I found, and it's it doesn't have the same documentation, and then I can I think it can be useful to to more people. So I, I try not to be writing repeated stuff, you know, only my my own findings or I don't know yeah. things that I didn't find that so so deeper documentation. I also had contributed a lot in the past for the PNP community with the list formatting samples, with the Power Platform samples as well. I've spoken to a few conferences online or some presentations as well. But I think um, it's mainly social media in my blog, my main type yeah. of contributions, yeah. But um, then you, you can post the, the links to my social media and to my blog in the video later, yeah. Yeah, of course. Michelle, just just one question. You have a yep. dual dual um, MVP, both in the business applications and M three sixty five. Or yep, yeah, it? it's SharePoint wow. and Power Apps. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. that's a, yeah. a, a a major achievement. <laughs> but what? Yeah, when I when I when I became an MVP, it was just M three sixty five. I got the business applications last year. So how many years have you been an MVP now? Uh. Two years and a half, I'd say. I think I, it was 2021, okay. I think, of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I'm not wrong. Okay, I awesome. Think. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, our last question is uh, Can you tell us what, what does the community mean to you and uh, how do you contribute uh, the most? What is your the most activities you do in, in the community? Well, I think it's kind of part of it is the same question as I answered before. It's like mostly active through LinkedIn to my blog and not only putting posts, but responding to people's questions and comments as well, because there's a lot of people that sometimes they send me even private messages with questions or they put questions on my posts. So I try to respond uh, the, most as, the most as I can wow. from those questions. Right. And in terms of uh, what I feel about community, it's to me, it's like, you know, having a uh, a big group of friends that have the same uh, passion about technology across the world, and sometimes I help yeah. them, sometimes they help me. You know, <laughs> which did, I did which you I go to the really MVP fun. summit? I didn't go to MVP summit, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah, yeah, me, maybe me next year. Yeah, too short short notice but, because I I got it now in uh, March, no, first of March, and that was uh, I know two weeks later, so. 
it's with family yeah, and travel and oh, yeah. let's be tool short notice the, the, se the sessions even that they were virtual were very very um collaborative you could uh, ask questions also from the online and and they included you and lots of the information there was amazing stuff that we cannot talk about but uh, it's a great experience hopefully okay. uh the three of us can can be next year there uh, yeah. I am catching yeah, up with can... the sessions now. <laughs> yeah, but you let me go. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you very much for 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 taking the time and and joining this this uh, this let's let's call it uh, interview <laughs> to get to know you. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I will I will I will link everything uh, from your from your content in the video description so that people can find you and follow you. Also your LinkedIn as well. And uh, yeah, make sure that uh, you follow Ami as well on, on his uh, YouTube channel and his uh, LinkedIn profile. He is very, very active mm -hmm. on the community and uh, myself as well. I try. I'm learning from the best. So yeah, thank well, you very much for joining and <laughs> have fun. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure.